Okay, so for today's Sunday case study, we have a 40-year-old female who's very active and in CrossFit, and she noticed a sudden onset about two weeks ago of neck pain and pain radiating down her left arm into these digits and some weakness, particularly in her triceps. Now, she tried some over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. She went to the emergency department and ended up getting this MRI scan. Here's the MRI scan, and on her neurological evaluation, she does have weakness in her triceps and a sensory defect in her uh, C7 distribution. She seems to be most comfortable when she lifts her arm and kind of holds it in this position. So you guys know the drill by this point. What's the diagnosis? What caused it? And what's the treatment? I'll do a full video explanation tomorrow. So like and comment to this video and follow up tomorrow for that video. All right, we're going to go through the answers of the case study from yesterday. Remember, we said we had a 40-year-old female who had a CrossFit injury and began to develop sudden onset of neck pain radiating down her left arm with this MRI. Now, what we see here at the C6 and C7 level is this disc that's extruded and herniated. Now, I like to tell my patients that the discs are the cushions that sit between the bones in our spine, and they're kind of like jelly donuts. So if you look at this normal disc here, you see the blue, which is the hard coating or the annulus of the disc, and the pink, which is kind of like the jelly of the disc or the squishy stuff. Now here on this side, you see the disc herniation. What happens is you can experience an annular tear or a tear in that hard coating, and then the inside or the squishy stuff or the jelly of the donut can leak out and pinch the nerve. So that's what's happened in this case. This patient was uh, lifting with CrossFit and probably tore her annulus or tore that coating of her disc doing a workout. Now, what I'll say about CrossFit is I have seen a bunch of spinal injuries in CrossFit, mostly because the high intensity interval of the nature and if the exercise or the lift is done incorrectly, it can put you at risk for injuring your spine. Now, in her case, she had a large extruded disc herniation that was causing a neurological deficit. So what I mean by that is she was not only experiencing severe pain, but she was having numbness and weakness in that arm. Now, often if it is a disc herniation, we will we'll, we'll try some conservative treatments such as physical therapy, rest, injections, and often disc herniations can slowly resolve on their own over a course of about three months. Now, 80% of disc herniations will resolve without surgery. In her case, the pain was extreme, it was excruciating, and I mentioned that she was holding her arm up like this, which is a sign of a pinched nerve because lifting the arm will put less traction on the nerve and will cause less pain. So often people with a large disc herniation will present to me like that. So we talked about the diagnosis and the cause of the injury, and so now on with the treatment. And this patient who's young, who's active, who ha only had one disc, and who only had a purely discogenic problem, so meaning it was a disc herniation, not arthritis or anything like that, my recommendation for her was an artificial disc. Now, many of you suggested fusion, but in my hands and in my clinical experience, I think disc replacement would be the better option in this patient's case. So how that's done is we make an incision on the front of the patient's neck. We get down to the patient's disc and we remove the whole disc, including the part that's herniated. Uh, this shows a picture of the disc being removed. We lift that disc up and then in its place, we slide in and implant into that space. That will allow the patient to preserve her lateral range of motion, flexion, extension, and rotation. And the patient will be able to resume all activities once she is healed from surgery. Here is what that x-ray looks like and stay tuned for more content like this.